What's up, everyone? Dr. Pulse here. Hextrovert Ty was gracious enough to let me kick off this exclusive interview tonight with the men, the myths, the legends, Jesse the Pit Boss, and Toshi Flow. For the 40,000 plus members in the PulseChain.com Telegram room, Jesse and Toshi are well known names, famous for dropping some of the biggest knowledge bombs we've heard in there. Everything from the benefits of Pulse Chain, like what makes it faster, cheaper, and more secure, to down the rabbit hole aspects of crypto. And when Toshi is not sharing what's inside that alpha brain of his, he is busy creating some pretty sick NFTs, which I'm sure we'll all get to see very soon. But tonight, Jesse and Toshi have given Hextrovert Ty the exclusive inside scoop on their new project launching on Pulse Chain and what's in store for all of us. It is a very exciting project and a great example of what's to come on Richard Hart's new blockchain. Very excited to have Jesse and Toshi with us tonight. Thanks for joining us, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having us on. That's a warm welcome. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks again for joining us, guys. Jesse, I'd like to start with you. What makes Pulse Chain special in your eyes, and why are you excited to be launching your project on it? Well, the Pulse community is kind of an evolution of what you know. We had the hex. We have the hex community, um, who's banded together for the last um, two years now, and learned so much in this space about what's wrong in the cryptocurrency um, space as a whole. You know, there's a lot of the there's a lot of exchanges that have scam wicks. They hold your keys. They lose your funds. Um, there's a there's a big giant lack of education in the cryptocurrency uh, space um, that really ends up having people get wrecked. But one thing that has never happened is anybody who's bought and hold hex getting wrecked. It doesn't happen. Um, but what does happen is they become just more and more educated in the space, and you see the community just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And Richard Hart really is is like the the fearless leader who's who's taught us um all the the skills and, and uh tradecraft necessary to keep ourselves uh safe in this space and to further educate people about how do you actually make money how does money work how does traditional finance work compared to cryptocurrency and why is cryptocurrency better and it got to the point where he literally said you know what there's so much ridiculous things going on in cryptocurrency right now. Um, let's fix it. And he's whether that's the gas fees or those scam wicks on the exchanges I was talking about, we're sick of it. We're done with it, right? So out of that kind of evolved um, the idea for Pulse Chain. And here it is, right? He's spent a lot of time. He's He's forked Ethereum. It's in its test net right now. And what Pulse Chain is, is a faster, cheaper version of Ethereum. Ethereum's got some issues going for it, right? It's been around for long enough where it's the Ethereum coin is very expensive. As the native coin, Ethereum coin goes up in price. The gas fees or the GUI, the you know, subset um, decimal of the native token, the native coin, it also gets more expensive as the price of Ethereum goes up. So over time, gas fees have gone up. And then the congestion in the network has also fed that that animal where it's now pretty much unusable for normal things that we would like to have happen on Ethereum. We would love it if cryptocurrency was <clears throat> able to be used for everyday tr transactions. If you could um, send money from one person to another and have it only cost fractions of a penny. But there's there's times on Ethereum where just a simple send of funds from one person to another could cost anywhere from 40 to $60. And then there's other functions that cost much, much more than that. A simple swap could cost $60 all the way to $300. And it's just completely unusable for everyday people. And it's a deterrent to mass adoption we'll never get mass adoption with the way ethereum is running right now so how do you fix that so ethereum says well we can 
move to a new system, proof of stake, as opposed to proof of work, and they make these promises year after year after year. Yep, we're migrating to proof of stake. It's coming, we promise. And then it never happens. And then they push it and they keep pushing it and it takes longer and longer. And it really begs the question, will they ever be on a proof of stake? You know, every time that we hear this, it's just pushed out longer and longer and longer. And I have a take on that, why it's so difficult for them to move to a proof of stake system, which is much more efficient and cheaper. Um, and that's simply that it's already a proof of work. You already have thousands and thousands of mining computers all running these transactions and verifying transactions and recording the ledger across them all. So what do you do? You just turn them all off and, and you reroute the transactions straight to validators. And even if you made the promise that you were going to do that, that very bullish announcement drives the price of Ethereum up even higher. So before you do that, you're only making the gas situation, the gas fees to run transactions. You're only making it worse and worse up until the moment you do that. And the miners have no incentive at that point. You've just told them you're working them out of a job. They will know they will cease to exist and their income that they're gathering will be gone. Right. So they have no incentive to to vote down the fees. <clears throat> so it's really a sticky situation, right? It's very difficult. Um, so what do you do? Well, you can launch a, a brand new blockchain. Um, whether that's you know. Solana or Kusama or um, any even Binance, any of these other blockchains, and they can say, "Oh well, we got we have computers that run proof of stake now. These validators, it's much faster and much better. You just got to migrate over here." So they launch empty, and there's nothing there. <clears throat> so they start out with like very very low liquidity, very low volume and they literally have to start over from scratch from and and take a large portion of the market cap and funds out of ethereum for them to be successful and and they usually end up having a fraction and being you know successful but they'll never have the full potential of what ethereum has already built they built ethereum is this giant empire <clears throat> So what Pulse Chain has done is this simply a complete clone of Ethereum. Everything that already exists on Ethereum will already exist on Pulse Chain on launch day. So all these tokens, all these um, smart contracts, if it exists and you own it and you hold the keys to it on the Ethereum chain, you can go into MetaMask, change a couple settings, and you will see those exact same things inside of the Pulse chain. It's fully stocked and ready ready for action, ready for people to swap and trade and run functions. Um, and that's something that's never been <clears throat> something that's never been done. And people ask where the value comes. Well, how do you do, how do you do that? How do you launch a complete blockchain with all these tokens? And how are they expected to have any value? Well, it, it's really interesting. It, this conversation can just go on and on how automated market makers work. But really, you only need one single asset on a chain to have a price. And because of how everything is paired together, everything will have a price as soon as that one thing has a price. So it's really a beautiful thing. You really only need Pulse Coin which will initially launch at zero to eventually be paired against something else. Uh, it will have to be through a bridge back to Ethereum and you pair it against something that has value such as um, a stable coin or even to Ethereum itself. And by doing that, based on that ratio, Pulse Coin has a price and everything that's paired to Pulse Coin then instantly has a price as well. Now everything's tradable. 
and it's literally a complete blockchain copy of Ethereum ready to go. Now, those prices aren't necessarily going to be the same. You know, it'll it, the markets will move it differently than the Ethereum chain for all of the tokens in there. <clears throat> but there's very, very real potential that price parity or equality will be reached between the two chains very, very quickly. And if it's not enticing for people to look in their wallets, change a couple settings and see, holy cow, the same things that I had on Ethereum, I have those same things over on the Pulse chain and they have value and I can go swap or I could do this or do that. Even to imagine for a second that people are just going to ignore that and just like forget that they have tradable tokens and they're welcome to hodl them, but to imagine that people are just going to do nothing and look the other way with all that value owned by them and they have the keys to it, that's just ridiculous. People will use this. And I will for sure be one of those people using it. You can count me in. Uh, Toshi Flo, how about you? What uh, excites you about Pulse Chain, and what are some of the things that you're looking forward to in the not so distant future? God, you know what? <laughs> I think the, the most is is the fees. I mean, I, I I've been in cryptocurrency since about 2016. Um, you know, it's just it, it's the fees. It's just never been so ridiculous. You know, Ethereum is just. Uh, you know, we need a solution to it. And I, I agree with Jess. It's, they keep making promises that something's going to happen, but how do you, how do you do that? What do you got to roll back the chain? Uh, and, and, and they don't want to do that. So I, I think it's just an, a, uh, back burner kind of situation. And, uh, Richard came up with the solution. I, I, I love it, you know, and we need this. I think, I mean, it's going to be crazy. I, I look at even things like NFTs, and it's like, oh my! If you if you really think about it, all the NFTs that uh, that are being minted and and collections, and um, I, you know, and I know Richard's not a big fan of NFTs, but uh, you know, a lot of people are. I definitely am. I'm also a creator. Um, but it's it's wild. Um, you know, like right now, you could, if you mint a collection of ten thousand NFTs on Ethereum, you're looking at you know, three, four thousand dollars to do that just to get them onto the, just to get them minted, right? But uh, Pulse Chain is going to be a fraction of that. You know, it's going to be a pen, what, maybe <laughs> probably less than 10 bucks or something like that, maybe five bucks. I don't even know. Um, and it's going to be amazing. I think that there's going to be a lot of market adoption, um, not just with crypto in general, but, you know, fungibles and non fungibles is going to be insane. Um, and I think we're going to see just tons and tons of projects come onto the pulse chain. And uh, yep. I'm, I'm super, super excited. I, I feel like everybody that's sick of all the stuff that's been happening as far as fees and uh, you know, they're, they're in the pulse. They're, they're really looking in this direction and, and they're coming together and, and thinking about developing great. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that, you know, Ethereum got just got decimated because of the, uh, but there's a lot of things that, that got decimated projects because of those fees on, on, you know, on Ethereum and those types of projects that are, that are, you know, that are amazing. Um, well, actually those projects are going to exist, can exist on the pulse chain. So yeah, I'm really excited about it. I'm super bullish as well. Um, so yeah. Yeah, Toshi, that's an excellent point. Um, you know, as, as excited as, as the users of Pulse Chain are already, I can only imagine how excited the developers are and the project owners are to be able to launch a project where, as you stated, they're not decimated by the uh, Ethereum gas fees. Um, so yet another, uh, another very exciting aspect of Pulse Chain. Jesse, uh, while we're on the topic of, of excitement, um, is there anything else that, that gets you excited about what's to come on Pulse Chain? I've heard a lot of good things from, from our own community. So <clears throat> historically, when you make a stake, your stake is pretty much locked up. It's stuck. You can't do any, you can't trade it. You got to wait for it to end. You're welcome to merge the end stake. It's not advisable. Um. But there's some interesting concepts developing and, and some developers working on 
it's something called encapsulated steaks. <clears throat> if you can wrap a stake inside of a smart contract, can you transfer ownership of that smart contract? And the answer is yes. It's actually been it's been done. You can do that with Gnosis Safe right now, um, and and writing a little bit of code to make a good front end to make that just very easy to do. You can encapsulate stakes and then transfer ownership of stakes. That's going to be a game changer. You know, people who get pinched, you know, for funds, they need some funds, and they've got a long stake. Instead of emergency end staking and ruining it, um, they can simply transfer ownership of it. So that that's a very interesting thing. Um, some people are fans of it. Some people are not. Um, I've heard a lot of excitement in the NFT space. Again, NFTs are very expensive to mint and, and, and make over on the Ethereum chain. <clears throat> it's going to be very cheap to do on Pulse chain. So there's people looking at ways to fork different protocols and bring them over so that there's there's platforms for people to to uh, transact and trade um, with all their uh, favorite NFTs. I mean, imagine waking up and just seeing there's – I mean – this is the great part. Think about all the NFTs that are on Ethereum right now that are all getting copied over to Pulse Chain. <laughs> so many. Um, and and a lot of, and there's a lot of them that have very, very high value. Um, they're going to be like, wow, look at this. I have another copy of this. Oh, I can go, I can bring this over to Pulse Chain. Maybe I should go over there and see what's going on. I, th- I, <laughs> I think we're going to get a lot of market adoption. Um, especially with the fees being so low, I think people are just, it's going to be like a breath of fresh air for anybody in crypto that's been doing anything on Ethereum. Um, I think it's, once the word gets out, which we all know it's going to get out, like Jeff said, as soon as somebody realizes, I can just switch my RPC settings on my MetaMask and I'm going to have tokens in there automatically with values. I better go check this out. I know you touched on that expensive side of the nfts like to mint them and obviously it appears uh, they're they're quite expensive to buy as well um do you see a good opportunity for uh, people who want to make less expensive nfts you know like collector cards or things like that where they're just priced out not only to mint them but to sell them and not only that but the people Absolutely. who buy them because it makes no sense to buy a five dollar collectible but it costs you forty dollars to get it a hundred percent, right? hundred percent. And and also just in general, like look at all the people. So, I mean, when the, I, I, I'm sure you guys remember when, I don't know, what was it like? Was it like a month ago, Jess? I think it was, or was it like a month ago when Eve Gas just started going bananas? I mean, it was like insane. And everybody was like, what, what's happening? And, and like, a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars to do a send. <laughs> I went on to open C and, uh, Sorry, sorry. I went on the Ether scan, and I was just I was looking at at Open Sea transactions, and it was honestly it was an Open Sea of failed transactions. So like, so all the customers were getting charged those fees, and Open Sea wasn't making the sale. Lots of them. So it's got to be on somebody's radar, right? Like some people got to realize this. Like, man, I just lost my. I was gonna try to buy this thing. I still got charged the fees, and Open Sea's probably like, oh my god, look at all these failed transactions. How much money do we lose being on Ethereum? I mean, it's a real thing. So I, w- I was in shock. I was just looking at it and I was like, oh my gosh. So I think people really appreciate uh, what they'll be able to do on the Pulse chain. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be cheaper. It's going to be faster. I mean, and like you said, you'll be able to buy things that are, you know, they're more affordable, um, especially with NFTs. Like you were saying, like if it's a card or something like, hey, it's worth five bucks, like you can pay five bucks for it. <laughs> So we're actually going to be introducing a, a, a protocol ourselves uh, for the community, built by the community, for the community. And it falls in line with the ethos of buying, staking, holding. Um, you know, what, what? one thing that's discouraging is your whole life, you've really been controlled by either either governments who are dictating what you do with your money um, and with your privacy or by big institutions and banks that tell you the same thing. 
and you have very limited control as to what happens with with your money in traditional finance. And cryptocurrency is supposed to be a solution where um, one, you have a little bit more privacy or quite a bit more privacy, um, but you can control what you want to do with your own money. Um, so after after talking through many different um, ideas of what would be best for the community, uh, we've we've developed a project that we'll be launching on the Pulse chain. Right now we call it the new crypto project, but it's not, um, we have a name. We can't tell you what that name is quite yet. Just a few more days and we'll have a white paper. Um, it's, re it, it's ready to go. We have a logo, we have all sorts of things. We just, uh, for certain purposes, we gotta wait just a few days. Uh, but here's what it's gonna allow you to do. And it's it's quite interesting and, and don't be, don't be scared of the word liquidations. Liquidations are very, very bad when you're in a bad environment, such as a central exchange where you leverage, you know, a little bit of money into a lot of money. You know, you put $10 in and they give you $1,000 to trade with. The price moves against you a little bit and you lose all your money uh, very, very quickly, right? That's that's very bad. And, it, and leverage can lead to a lot of, price downward action, downward movement. Um, but this is a little bit different. And, and let, let me explain. So it's a lending protocol. It, it allows you to collateralize your own assets. Not that much different than when you collateralize your home. You can take a home equity loan. You have something of value. You have your home. Um, it's worth more than you owe on it. Um, or maybe you don't owe anything on it. And you can take a loan out against your house. Um, when you do that, you're, you're typically tax advantaged because there's typically no um, taxes paid on loans. Um, however, if you had to sell your home to extract that value, of course, you're going to have to pay some taxes on that, right? And, and the same holds true with cryptocurrency assets. You sell something, guess what? You're, you're going to have to pay the tax man, you know, in your jurisdiction. But if you take a loan, not that much different than a credit card or something. No, there's no taxes on the, on those funds. So <clears throat> what this protocol allows you to do is collateralize something that you already own and set your collateralization level at pretty much whatever you'd like, as long as it's over 110% of what is being given to you as a loan. You're bringing a little more to the table and you're getting less. Okay, so let's say the liquidation level is um, in the protocol is is at 110%. So I'll give an example. You bring some native coin of the blockchain into this protocol, and you, you, you enter into a smart contract with $110,000 worth of the native coin of the blockchain. The protocol will mint out of thin air, $100,000 for you. You just collateralized 110% and you got 100%, okay? Now, you're free to do whatever you want with this stable coin. That stable coin is backed by what you just locked up. And you can go take that stable coin, you can buy your, gro you can you can take it through a bridge, <laughs> send it to, um, you know, swap it for something that's on a major exchange like Coinbase, and extract the value that way and go buy your groceries or you can go purchase other cryptocurrency, whatever you'd like to do with that, that's yours. All you did was lock up something so it can no longer be used and you locked it up as collateral and you minted some stable coin. <clears throat> now, in the example I gave you, you set your collateralization level really, really low. So you knew the minimum collateral you had to bring was 110%, but you knew anything less than that, you're going to get you're going to get liquidated. So let's say the value of that coin collateralized falls under 110. The system will take that away from you. It will close out your loan, end that smart contract. But guess what? You already got your value. 
you already have your stable coin that you're doing whatever you'd like with, right? Did you really lose much? Did you, what was the loss thing? You lost, let's see, 10%, right? But maybe you were willing to do that because the alternative would have been selling through an automated market maker your coin, taking a large slippage, and then add those fees to, well, now you're going to have to pay the tax man anywhere between 20 and 40%. So there's a real potential where if you had sold to extract that same value, you would have lost half your money, half your money to other people. That's absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> so the biggest worry is, well, what happens in a liquidation? Normally, in other environments where it's done differently, there's lots and lots of downwards price action because either an asset that's collateralized is immediately sold or auctioned. And you actually see that in traditional finance as well. <clears throat> if you collateralize a car and the bank has a lien out on your car and you default and they come and collect that collateral, guess what? They're selling it, okay? And they're gonna get as much value as they can out of it. <clears throat> This protocol doesn't do that. So here's what happens. And it helps by explaining what happens if you wanted to pay back your loan. Well, you, you collateralized your, your native token, your native coin of the blockchain, and it minted you some, some stable coin. So if you ever wanted to pay that back, all you do is bring back stable coin, which burns itself, and it gives back the native coin of the blockchain. All right, it's, simple, it's a simple burning and minting, okay? So let's say in the event of a liquidation, what happens? Well, it's quite simple. Instead of you burning them, those burning the stable, somebody else's stable gets burned, but they get the native coin of the blockchain, right? They just collected $110,000 worth of pulse coin and they burned $100,000 worth of stable coin. And those are long-term holders. They're, they actually are putting up stable into a large pool called the stability pool. There's a whole bunch of stable coin in there. And they're the ones that are collecting in the event of the rare liquidation events. Okay. And they're happy to be long-term holders of some pulse coin in those events. So there's never a sell that ever occurs. It simply moves the pulse coin into some people who would prefer to have that. And out of the pool, it burns the loan amount that was taken. It burns that stable coin. It's almost like doing a, uh, an OTC trade, completely bypassing the um, automated market makers. There's no slippage. There's no sale. It's just a transfer and a closeout of a loan. All right, so it's, 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 pretty, it's a pretty amazing thing. And the end user, the person who took the loan, they already got their value out at the very beginning of all this. Now, what's in it for the stability providers? The stability providers who are providing stablecoin into the protocol, into the stability pool, well, they're collecting those pulse coins in the rare liquidation events, but they're also farming a native token, the native token of the project. And what can they do with, the, with, <clears throat> with that native token? Well, they can go and they can stake it. They can lock it up. This, this protocol for the end user has no interest, no repayment terms, but there is a fee. And that fee ranges between 0.5 and 5% based on the health of the overall network. Right? The system looks for a collateralization level average of over 150. Typically what you see is you'll see that it'll be over 300 and very, very few liquidation events. And again, even in those events, those people have already extracted their value. But depending on the health of the system, the system will, will, will hinder or, or restrict people from taking loans with a higher um, fee, you know, closer towards the, the 5%. And then in, when it's a good time to take loans, that fee actually will go all the way down to 0.5%. So you've got, um, and, and algorithmically it's doing this, 
um, to kind of slow down new loans or kind of speed up new loans from coming into the system. But that 0.5 to 5% fee that are, is tacked on to every loan, that actually comes out of the stable coin that's being paid to the end user. That stable coin goes to the stakers, the holders and stakers of the native token. So let's say you want a residual income um, and you, you would like to collect stable coin. You want dollar coins just uh, accumulating that you can claim. You buy the native token, you stake it, and you're literally collecting stable coin on a residual basis. You can take stable coin, you can put it into the stability pool. What does the stability pool do? It allows you to farm the native token, but it also allows you to collect pulse coin from the rare liquidation event. And you can put these funds in whichever pool you would like. <clears throat> and um, there's other there's other protocols that keep the peg to the dollar. So let me give you an example of that. One stable coin, regardless of what it's trading at. So if it's trading at 99 and a half cents, it's always redeemable for one dollar's worth of pulse coin. So there's going to be immediate arbitrage because people like to pick up their, their coins for cheap. And it that assists in pegging the value. And it's it keeps the value of the stable coin at a dollar. There's lots and lots of mechanisms at place um, in, in play to make this all work. One last thing I'd like to touch on. You can over collateralize when taking a loan. You are welcome to put into the protocol as much as you would like and take out as little as you would like. There's there's a, a cap on how little you can take out. That's at $2,000. <clears> That's the smallest loan you're able to take. Uh, but you can put in as much as you want and completely avoid liquidations and hold on to your coins for life. If you would prefer to take a loan out on your own assets, you're welcome to do that. You have the freedom to do that with your house, with your car, you're welcome to go sign a deal with a bank and get raped on interest rates, or you can enter into a smart contract and choose to have the freedom to do that with your own assets on the blockchain. And if the value of your coin goes up or down, as long as you stay over that 110% collateralization level, you're welcome to take out as many pulse coin as you would like or as many stable coin minted as you would like, as long as you stay over that one. You're also allowed to, it's called topping up. So, you you know, um, let's say for some reason you got close to that, to, to, you know, being liquidated, you could just top up at any time. You could top up your, uh, your collateralization level and, and just keep it further away from that, you know, just to be safe. So um, you're able to do that question on the underlying asset that you're collateralizing so if i put it in uh, at 110 percent to get out 100 percent of the stable coin um, and that underlying asset uh, at the time uh, was worth a dollar per coin and then i go do whatever i want to do with the money that i've loaned and now i've decided i've done some good things and i've made some other money and i want to come back and get uh, let's say the pulse token, that's what I that coin, that's what I put into the collateralization. Now that that coin has gone up in value to say a dollar fifty. What do I have to pay back to get my pulse coins back out? So you can take out all of the additional ratcheting up or the price that it that it went up, right? At any point. So <clears throat> if you put in or if you took out, um, let's say, you know, $1,000 or $2,000 worth of loan, um, you have to bring $2,000 back to get $2,000 worth of Pulse coin out. You will get the equal amount of Pulse coins out that you bring back, you know, to, to pay back. All the excess over and above, that's yours to move and take out or take additional loan out as you see fit. Wow. 
Really cool stuff, guys. So we want to we want to have a a well rounded interview here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the tough questions. Uh, um, but what's for the people out there wondering? Um, what's maybe a misunderstood aspect of uh, of something that maybe could be considered uh, a negative of this of this project? And and what's your um, how do you uh, respond to uh, any possible concern there may be out there? Some people um, believe that they can use this as a degen tool so that they can collect a whole bunch of just a whole bunch of you know extra coins, right? So let me give you an example of what somebody would not want to do, but there's people thinking, oh, I'm gonna try this, but in, the protocol kind of prevents them from from it being beneficial. So let's say somebody puts in some pulses. And they mint almost the same dollar value worth of stable coin. But there's a 10% difference there, right? So they take that stable coin and they say, wow, I'm going to go buy some more pulse. So they go buy some more pulse off the open market. And then they they put that into the protocol. They they top up their loan. And then they get minted more stable coin. And they keep taking that stable coin every time. And they keep putting it into the protocol and ratcheting up and ratcheting up. And eventually they have a whole ton of pulse coin and very, very little stable coin. They're left at, you know, a ton of iterations of this and they're holding, you know, a couple bucks worth of stable coin and just endless amounts of pulse coin in there, you know, until they ran out, right? They're going to run out. And they think, well, if pulse coin just goes to the moon, I'm going to be rich. Well, if it doesn't, you're transferring ownership of that. Again, there's no sale, but you're going to lose those pulse coins. They're going to go from you to somebody else who's a long-term holder. And what are you left holding at the end of the day? A couple bucks worth of stable coin? Right? I, w- I wouldn't risk that. Okay? So if you use the protocol as intended to collateralize your own assets, you, you might have a million dollars worth of pulse coin. And let's say you just want a couple thousand bucks out so you can uh, buy your daughter a new car or a used car, okay? Go ahead. Put in just over $2,000 worth of Pulse coin, or put in $4,000 worth of Pulse coin, whatever you'd like, and mint yourself um, $2,000 worth of stable coin and go do what you need to do. Use it responsibly in this fashion, and you have no worries. So this sounds like a huge project. This is very exciting. I can see why you guys are excited. Just kind of to recap. So this is a loan protocol on Pulse Chain that only takes about 10% over uh, collateral over your loan amount, but you can over collateralize. You can go more than that. There is no repayment terms. There is no interest on it. In, instead, you pay a small, relatively small fee. If you're not into the loan, you can at least provide liquidity and stake and get stable coins that way. Um, and this allows you to use your pulse coins as collateral and never have to sell them if you didn't want to. That is right. absolutely correct. Yeah, and the, if, you know, if you there. were left with a choice, if you were left with a choice, you want to go extract some value. You've got a bunch of pulse coins and you say, well, what are my options? I can go sell on Uniswap or pancake swap or whatever that fork ends up being and you can dump on everybody's head including yourself and then you have a taxable event or you could say well wait 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 why don't i just collateralize the amount that i'd like to take out and i can avoid all of that with no sell what i mean i know what option that that i would take so that's what we're bringing to the table. Something like this, obviously, people are want to, going to want to be involved in it. Are there any, I assume this is launching at the same time that Pulse Chain launches, which at time of recording is about two months from now, give or take. Are there any investor opportunities, any early investor opportunities? Yes. Yeah, so very soon, you will see something that feels very much like um, the Hex um, adoption amplifier or the Pulse Chain Sacrifice. Um, the details of that will be released very, very soon. Just a, just a handful of more days. 
and um, you'll see some documents describing how that works. And we'll have some videos that will be released. Um, you'll hear some influencers talking about this across their streams. And the details of what anything like that would look like will be will be available. And guys, if you need to, uh, if you haven't joined the, the group on Telegram, it's called New Crypto Project. Please feel free to, you know, shoot us a DM. We'll make sure we get you a link to get in there. Um, that way you can take a look at all the uh, the white papers, all the information as soon as we release it here in just a few days. So. Um, if you're not in there already, please feel free to reach out. We're, we're happy to bring you in and um, so that you can see that information as soon as it's available. So a question I have, which um, a lot of people will want to know, can you touch on the trustless part of it and uh, not your keys, not your coins? Yes, absolutely. This protocol completely runs itself. Algorithmically, there are no keys. There's no updates. Nobody can go and change the code and run any uh, updates to it. It is what it is. Um, your keys, they never go to a central exchange. Um, <clears throat> what you've seen recently, actually, just a few days ago, um, in one of the lending platforms, there, there's three major lending platforms. you got Compound, Aave, MakerDAO, and one of those, they actually ran an update that just gave a bunch of people free money. Like, just 90, made money. 90 million, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, $90 million <laughs> we just gave away. We accidentally coded that in. Like, how does that happen? It's ridiculous, right? This protocol can't do that. It can't take people's money away. It's your smart contract. You always own it. You're welcome to run that those functions however you see fit. Pay back the loan, move your collateralization level around, whichever... To whatever level you'd like over 110 um it's, it's a beautiful thing you completely control what you would like to do with your funds on that will it be audited yes actually so this is a fork of a protocol that's running on many other blockchains it's been through the ringer it's been through some stress tests it's been through some major audits and it's also being audited since we forked it just to cover our basis and show, look, the code is the same. It hasn't changed. Same solidity code, but here's a fresh audit. That's great. That's good news. I'm sure a lot of people are happy to hear. So, Jesse, let me ask you, with the collateralized assets, not that probably this would happen, but just in case, uh, what would, what would happen if the, if the entire market dumped like 90%, what would happen in that scenario? Yeah, that's, a, that's a really good question. So actually the protocol has built in place that what it's looking for is 150% collateralization level or above. And if it doesn't see that it, it starts restricting people from taking new loans. It also, that 110, I must say, in those severe black swan events like that, it will work its way up from 110 above that in order of those that have the lowest collateralization until it has enough funds to sustain itself across the whole pool. Now, people have learned that how this happens, and people are used to, you know, 30 to 40% market dips, you know, and on the Ethereum chain, <clears throat> there are times where it dips a lot more. But what I think you'll see is pretty typical of what the other blockchains do, and people will tend to over-collateralize themselves. 300% is, is the typical average across the other chains. And as long as people are doing that, then the system will sustain itself just fine. Those who choose to under collateralize themselves, remember though, they got their dollar value up front. They actually didn't really lose anything. They got their stable coin right up front, but it will start liquidating at the lowest level up until it stabilizes the, this protocol. Has this uh, protocol or project uh, been discussed with Richard at all? <clears throat> Yes, actually, it, it came as a surprise to him. Um, I explained the protocol. 
um, his his first reply um, was making the world uh, better is good. Uh, but he had some follow on comments that leverage is bad. Leverage equals liquidations equal downward price action. Um, we want the price of pulse to go up. You know, so I, I explained to him, same as I explained to you, you know, how the protocol works and and how in the protocol, there's no sell that ever happens. It's simply a transfer of ownership in the rare liquidation events. And um, the same as I told you all, I've said when the white paper is released, um, he's welcome to it. Um, we respect Richard for everything he's he's brought to the community and what, what he's taught us. Um, and we've done everything we can to make this fall in line with people being able to control their own money, keep their assets if they choose to, and have some positive price action for the whole community um, in general. Um, I wouldn't expect to see him um, shilling this project, right? That's never been him. He, he, he rarely talks about anything other than um, what he's built as to be expected, right? But we're at least um, uh, trying to show him what we bring and why this is beneficial to the community. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the white paper and uh, I believe you've got some uh, other forms of marketing and, and uh, YouTube is that are going to uh, be getting this information out there. So I know I'm really looking forward to, to digging into this a bit more with an open mind. We're excited. Yeah, we're excited for everybody to do that. Um, yeah, just a few more days here, guys. You'll be able to, to take a look at everything. A lot of hard work has been put into this thing. So uh, from instructional videos that are being filmed, you know, there's a, a film studio that's putting everything together. They're working hard. There'll be some cartoon graphic videos that, that kind of show you um, what the pools look like and, and how the coins go from one to another and what happens, you know, when somebody takes a loan and when they pay it back and stuff, You'll you'll see all that. The white paper is going to be like no other white paper you've seen. It's not going to be a simple PDF. It's going to be a very nicely laid out um, flipbook <clears> that <throat> takes you through all the different scenarios of what could happen and what does happen with other protocols and why this one's different. Um, it's a lot of it is in layman terms, so it's easy to understand. Um, so you don't have to be a, a mad crypto scientist to understand it. Uh, it's actually an enjoyable read. A lot of people say, oh, white papers, uh, they you know, don't even look at it. But, you know, this is a really enjoyable read. I think you guys will appreciate the <clears throat> the website and the DAP. Um, I think you guys will really like how that's laid out, the logo. Um, and, but the code itself and what it does, what it allows you to do with your own assets, that's the game changer here. Being able to collateralize the things that you want to, when you want to, and not being forced, um, have, having choices, having some freedom. Instead of having to dump your, your assets on the market and dump on your own head, take a huge slippage event and then pay the tax man because you have these big taxable events. Now you have other options. Use them wisely. And this is a, this is a very beautiful thing for the community. Uh, thank you for your time, Dr. Pulse. You you want to say anything or wrap it up? And um, yeah, let's uh, get it out there. Yeah, thank you, guys. I was just going to... Uh, the Telegram room is new crypto project. We will put some information and a link in the uh, comments, the info below. New crypto project on Telegram. Toshi Flow, Jesse the Pit Boss. Awesome to have you guys on. Thank you so much for sharing this. And... Uh, I don't know how you couldn't be excited about something like this. You can, you can get money without selling your pulse coins. It's uh, it's a pretty big deal. Thank right. you guys. Thank you guys. Appreciate it.